different people I respect kind of have conflicting statements. I respect Mauricio Suleiman, WBC president. I have a statement where he says it's basically like drinking three Red Bulls. I respect Victor Conti a lot, and he said it's similar to what Billy Joe Saunders took. I guess the main issue, we had Erica Montoya on yesterday, and I agree with her. We need more um, clear-cut definition of what is legal and what's not legal because it just seems like this is a massive gray area and i feel utterly confused because i'm not a scientist yeah exactly um and i think the 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 problem luke is what boxing's larger problem is which is too many cooks in the kitchen too many sanctioning bodies too many uh too many people uh, kind of setting rules and those rules differ from place to place, from organization to organization. That's kind of why boxing needs one organization that rules over the whole thing so that it can determine whether it's VADA, WADA, <laughs> whoever is going to be determining these, uh, you know, these re- requirements um it's got to come from one person otherwise you know they're different people are going to be interpreting in different ways exactly what's happening right now they're going to find loopholes they're going to find this they're going to find that because at the end of the day money they don't want to lose money on this card they put forth a lot of it already to make it happen they found a loophole to make it not to make it move forward it's going to move forward now it appears um and we still don't have an answer. So that that's, that, again, that's just indicts boxing and it's multiple uh, ruling bodies that just can't seem to come together and make one um, solitary decision. It's, it's multiple things going on now. And that just points, that indicts the sport of boxing once again, in my opinion. Yeah, um, two observations from me. One, it feels like the underlying current is because Valdez, who is a great person in general, I really like Valdez on a moral level as a good person. I feel like he almost reminded me of a school teacher when he beat Burchelt and said any dream is possible, but I can't help but think everyone involved doesn't want to make Canelo mad because he's the cash cow and this is someone from his team. So you wonder if that was possibly weighed into this decision making process. I can't help but think that. Then secondly, I'm a big Olympic boxing fan the 2016 olympic gold medalist in hobson casacio has been largely voiceless throughout this process despite being an undefeated fighter signed with top rank we have not heard much of his thoughts he's fighting in valdez's adopted hometown essentially he's fighting in an india casino we don't understand how he feels about this it's been largely all valdez's predicament valdez's situation valdez's comments we have not heard from Hobson at all. And I think that that's also been another telling sign to me. Yeah. And I, and I did hear that he wasn't uh, alerted to this until it was already out there into the press. Um, so that's, that's a big no, no, and that's not good either. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I'm a, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stickler for the rules. Um, and if they were following the VADA rules and those dictated that, uh, this particular drug was not permitted, then he should be suspended. And, and if that, you know, this fight should not be taking place. Um, but you know, with so many people weighing in, um, and I do think that the WBC has a responsibility to, um, make make the right decision which i don't think they did um um you know i i um, i'm very critical of the wbc at times um um they, they've had as much to do with boxing's ills as anybody um and uh they had an opportunity here to make a, a make a decision that supported their uh their saying that they are you know very anti-drug and very um, you know, clean boxing and this and that. I don't think this decision necessarily supports that. Um, but uh, I do understand that there are different men, there are many different interpretations of this. 
Um, and um, I don't know that anybody necessarily has the has the right answer. All we know is this fight is moving forward. I do know this. I do know that there has been a stain put, as, as tiny as it may be, a stain on Oscar Valdez. Because when you talk to talk about him in the future, this is going to come up. There has been another stain, as small as it may be, on the camp um, and on Canelo Alvarez by his association with his camp. So he may have had nothing to do with it. He may, you know, but the, the, the realities are that he was suspended for a in 2018. And Valdez is now uh, on the brink, or he was on the brink of being suspended for taking, uh, you know, questionable drugs, performance enhancing drugs, or supposedly. Those are facts. Um, those are going, you know, will that play into the legacy of Canelo? I think it will eventually um will it play into the legacy of oscar valdez i think it might um and i think these fighters need to think about that uh when they you know when fighters say i don't i didn't know what was being put in my body i i don't know that i buy that i don't know that i buy that um they should know um it's their bodies um so they should think about that and the kind of maybe years of uh, of bad you know press bad whatever that may follow them as a result of even a questionable test so um i do believe that there's a stain on the camp on on the on the stable um and we'll see where it goes from here people may forget about it um uh, you know one big win can erase erase a lot of controversy <laughs> Uh, look at Canelo. I mean, people hardly even bring up that Klobuchar thing anymore. I mean, and, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad, but it is what it is. Well, let's get on just some quick hits. The rest.